Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zachabane101, and you may be noticing that we're outside of our private room, because when I turned off the game, apparently it decided to save up here, uh, rather than down below. Um, so I'm not sure actually what we have on us right now. Um, but one thing I just want to mention is instead of the series being in 4K, we're going to have the series be in 1440p um, at a bitrate between 20,000 and 25,000 kilobits per second. So hopefully that'll still look pretty good, but that is typically the bitrate I record all my videos at. It's just that at 1440p, that means I can um, give you guys the quality that I'm actually recording at, but at least I can get the videos out even faster and easier. Because the problem with 4K is it takes three times as long to get those things out. And uh, that just is too much time, especially when I'm trying to do other games that are online only. It can definitely lag that stuff up. So for the meantime, we'll do 1440p. It should be fine. It shouldn't be too bad. Uh, anyway... Um, do we want to throw some stuff in here, or do we want to just take on some orders? Might as well just take on some orders. Although there was some stuff to read, and we gotta construct a bridge, right? Let's get the bridge out of the way. This seems reasonable to me. Hey, Sam, mind doing me a favor? There's a bridge that needs building. Over a river, just outside that distro center. It's too deep to ford, and we'd like a long-term solution. The foundation's already been laid. And everything required to finish the job should be in storage. All you need to do is carry the remaining materials to the construction area and use them to complete the bridge. If it turns out there isn't enough there for our needs after all, you'll have to come up with the rest on your own. I know you've got a lot on your plate right now, but remember, this bridge will make your life easier too. Big true. All right, and that's kind of the theme of the game, right? It's like not only are you helping yourself, you're helping your fellow players, which is super cool, and they in turn will help you out. Complete the bridge in the designated location. Other porters will be able to use the bridge that you build. So this is an order that could make a big difference to a lot of people. All right, and we will be given 400 medals, and I believe all we need is 400 medals, but uh, we'll bring some of our extra medals as well. So we will accept those in total. We've added a bridge schematic to your PCC. The first step is laying the foundation, after which you'll have to supply additional materials to finish the job. Plenty of rivers and canyons could do with a good bridge, you know. Take a stroll across one you built yourself, and I guarantee you'll be glad you made the effort. Give it a try. Okay, so not only do bridges take up more space, um, but vehicles can go over them. Not only, uh, motorcycles, but trucks as well, which is super, super valuable. Um, and while you go over these bridges, it costs no power to the vehicle to go over them, which is great. So you save a little bit of power just having that nice bridge. If you have, like, exoskeletons and things like that, they also don't cause power to be on there too, which is super, super nice. Um, but for now, we will just confirm we don't need a PCC because the bridge is already there. We are just here to finish it up uh, and complete the job. So we'll just grab these two here and we'll just auto sort for the sake of it. And as you can see, there's 200 metal in each of these boxes, right? You see how we have this high density metal on our shoulders and whatnot? Yeah, that shit's awesome. Look how big those are. Those are large size cases. And we have the same amount of metal in these little boxes here, which is why it's a good idea not to uh, delete them. Not to recycle the, the high-density boxes. Have a pleasant trip. Now, if you have a big box already, you might as well just send it out. Okay, Sam. Make your way to the designated construction area for the bridge. The foundation should already be in place. With your help, we'll have the thing finished in no time. There should be a terminal nearby. Access it to submit additional materials. Now, I'm not sure... Okay, we only needed 400 pieces anyway, but it was worth bringing the extra Sam. just in case. Looks like you found the site. There should be a terminal nearby. Access it to submit additional materials. Give the NPC some love. I think I'm giving NPCs more love than players for some reason. Oops. I always get confused on bridges. You have to hold the options button instead of the uh, square button. 
So then you just <laughs> end up uh, whacking him a good old wallop. So all you do is just add materials here, press and square on both the items, just like them both, and then you hold X for confirm, and you are golden. Another S rank, easy. I keep forgetting to, to hit the auto scroll. Bravo, Sam. That bridge should make life easier for a lot of people. You can be sure that every traveler and porter who passes that way will put it to good use. Keep an eye out for other spots that could do with another well-placed bridge. No problemo, friendo. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. I forget that uh, I forget when we unlock the Half-Life stuff. I'm not sure if we have access to it right now. Like if we go into the private room, if we get an email about it, uh, or if we have to do the next quest. We might actually have to do the next quest though. Sam, got a new order for you. Another delivery to make and a knot to link up. Check the terminal when you have a moment. All right, so let's go to our private locker and we'll drop some things off. Your private locker. So obviously we don't need to lug around these <laughs> very heavy high density metals. Let's place them in our private locker here because they will definitely come in handy down the line. Um, and I guess we should prepare ourselves for the journey to come. So let's, let's place this climbing anchor in the locker. Currently our boots have seen better days, but until they're broken, they are still useful. However, you don't want them to break in the middle of a battle or in the middle of a BT zone. So we'll most likely be replacing them momentarily. Um, but we got a ladder and I guess we'll have to go use our brand new fabrication tool. We'll make one container repair. No, we're going to be given container. We already have container repair spray. That's right. We don't even need to make one. Now you see the little square on the left. That means we have them in our private locker. Um, but it also counts the climbing anchors that are partially used. So we're going to make a brand spanking new climbing anchor. What I really should do is put the uh, other climbing anchor into the public chest because people will just take that shit all day. You know, it's free stuff, free real estate. And we'll put the ladder on our back as well. Just for the sake of uh, balance. Again, we don't need to really kid ourselves out here. Uh, so we'll confirm that. And we'll go to our private locker. Container repair spray, thankfully, very light. So we will just carry this on our tool rack, just for now. And that'll do it. In reality, you really don't need container repair spray, but it is nice if you're worried about going into a BT zone and getting dragged under, or if you're worried about getting shot by uh, <laughs> an enemy. That could also be a problem, and of course the integrity of your box means you'll be able to handle the situation a little bit better and not have to worry about accidentally running into a wall, breaking your stuff instantaneously. And I'm assuming on this harder difficulty, um, running into a wall will do way more damage than it's ever done, especially if your uh, containers are completely destroyed. But it's not too uncommon to see a player, including myself, running around with like completely broken gear. Um, or completely broken containers, but perfectly healthy items inside. Uh, no secrets yet. Check on the BB. Get the free likes. El Su the BB. Yeah, boo boo. Boo. I believe uh, also tapping on the glass helps with his stamina, with uh, BB stamina. 
check the terminal for any sort of data logs, which I think we got a few. I got more tips. Get rid of those. There's a lot. I mean, if you ever have any questions while you're trying to play this game, like, the game tells you. <laughs> the game tells you in spades. And here's one of the items that we just got. The Seven Samurai. I actually just picked up Ghost of Tsushima. People are saying this is really good. Uh, well, sorry. Not only is the movie fantastic, but uh, the game itself is fantastic, too. A classic work from Akira Kurosawa, who became alongside Godzilla's Iri uh, Ishiru Honda, one of Japan's most globally acclaimed directors. The movie developed a huge cult following worldwide, and its story was retold in the Hollywood classic The Magnificent Seven. The image of the villagers hiring the Seven Samurai in order to protect themselves strikes a chord with many preppers living as they do without the support of an organized nation, state, and making this a classic, uh, old copies of which are much sought after. And that's all of it. All right, new interviews from Hartman, Necrosis, and the ancient Egyptian view of life and death. Three years ago, the Egyptians believed that we humans were composed of two elements, the Ha and the Ka, the body and the soul. Various texts expound upon their nature in detail, but perhaps it is simplest to conceive of them as follows. The soul is that which joins with the child in the womb and gives life to the body. It is also that which departs the body upon death. Ergo, the body is simply a vessel. Should the soul return to it, it will live again. This is precisely what is observed in near-death experiences, a soul separated, albeit briefly, from its body. The Egyptians believed death not to be an instantaneous change of state, but a process, a process by which the soul moves from a realm from one realm to another. But this process itself has changed. Thanks to the death stranding, in the normal order of things, when death occurs, the soul vacates the body and passes into the seam. From there, it transitions to the beach, and only then on to the world of the dead. But after the stranding, a soul that has already made its journey to the beach may attempt to return to its body in this world. It was hard to believe at first, but the process of necrosis provided proof of this phenomenon that was difficult to deny. This is why it is imperative that we burn the bodies of the dead. The body must be destroyed to sever the link with the soul. Only then will the soul be free to journey the world beyond. So, that's why it's a huge problem to have people necro necrosicize. Because they'll, they'll stay as a being, or whatever the hell. But apparently the game kind of loses it a little bit, because in the beginning, they're like, well, if he turns into... Um, if he turns into a ghost, he explodes. Like, he gets eaten by a ghost or whatever, or the giant dude, and then turns into a crater. Due to matter touching antimatter. But in the context of the gameplay, if you leave someone dead for 48 hours, um, in game time, of course. Uh, then... That body turns into... Um... I think it just turned into a... A permanent BT. And I believe they also affect the BTs around them. It might turn them to gold, maybe? But if you do get a crater by being consumed by a seeker or hunter, that will guaranteed turn all the BTs in the zone gold, and which means that you will get an actual game over. If they- if a golden BT touches you, even, you die. Point blank, period. Which means if you make a crater, you make the game a lot harder for yourself, because you destroy a path, and you make everything ten times more deadly. Chiral symmetry. The word chiral comes from the Greek word chire, meaning hand. Oh, okay. Interesting, I didn't know that. Uh, compare your left with your right. They seem similar in both size and shape, yes? Now face your palms away and, uh, away from you and place one hand over the other. Their shape do not overlap exactly, but place your palms together and voila, a match. 
It is as if one hand is the mirror image of the other. But again, if you were to actually compare the mirror image of your hand to itself, we would see that the two are not identical. This is the essence of chirality, the state in which the mirror image of a shape does not match the original. It has been theorized that BTs are mirror images of ourselves. Were we to exist in the same point in time and space, our shapes, as it were, would not overlap neatly onto one another, save in reflection. And when our particles meet their opposites, a void out occurs. The new form of communication we have devised utilizes speeches, which are akin to mirrors reflecting this world and the other, hence the term chiral network, or a handshake, if you will. Chiralium. Also three years ago, so all these are from three years ago. You would like to know more about Chiralium? Well, wouldn't we all? I am happy to present the latest theories, but you must be aware that this is all that they are. Theories. Chiralium, like dark matter, was born along with our universe and has existed ever since. Just not in a dimension we were able to perceive. Until now. It is the beach that gives us access to that dimension, and with it knowledge of Chiralium's existence. Not just knowledge of it, of course. We have since observed it coalescing into crystalline form and recorded measurable physical and mental effects on individuals exposed to it. It has reshaped our understanding of reality and proven instrumental in the formulation of its multiverse theory of beaches. Chiral matter is not affected by the passage of time. As far as these particles are concerned, none has elapsed since the Big Bang. A little wonder they escaped our notice for so long. Until man and BT first came together in Void Out and left nothing but Chiralium in their wake. Many of these claims are yet to be verified. But I believe that this is a fair summary of the scientific community's current consensus on the matter. No pun intended. I shall soon be heading west for the, or with the first expedition, and I look forward to learning more about Chiralium and its connections to the beach along the way. Interesting. So, Chiralium does not exist in a timeline. It went from not existing to existing at the beginning of the Big Bang and it never aged. Hence why you can make anything with it. That makes sense. So things that are in Chiralium, I guess, don't perceive time anymore or something like that? Something along those lines? Who knows, right? The Chiral Network 1. This is written by Mama. And this is her first email uh, three years ago. Before first expedition. This is before Hartman went out with the expedition crew. Okay. Central not HQ. So the core infrastructure is complete. The basic Cupid ready chiral network setup is good to go. Now all we have to do is connect Central Knot City to Capital and prove that it actually works. Sadly, I won't be here to see it. I've been assigned to the expedition team's second group, so I'll be heading west with the others. But the people in charge here are the best of the best. They'll have the network operational inside three uh, inside of three years, just as planned. I'm sure of it. And while they're seeing to that, we'll be visiting towns and whatnot across the country and putting the facilities in place for when things are finally up and running. Amelie and the others in the lead group will be forging the connections and laying the groundwork to make sure everything goes to plan. Afterwards, we'll just need to link it all up with operational cupids, and that should be that. <laughs> it's kind of like the Apollo missions back in the day. They used a three-stage rocket to get to the moon, right? Well, we're using a three-stage process to do something almost as revolutionary. So that's why cupids are so important. The only way we can really link everything up. A strange concoction of Chiralium. All right. This is a very long title. Distribution, or two years ago, Distribution Center West of Capital Knot City. By Benjamin Hancock, the guy that's the owner here. 
It's been about a year now since we came here with the rear guard. The first folks through did us uh, the first folks through did us the favor of setting up the chiral relay and patching things up before we arrived. So we're doing it all right. Not so sure about everything else though. Folks back home sound kind of freaked out. We don't know what's going on in Central Capital, let alone how Amelie and the others who kept heading west are doing. But something doesn't feel right. What's more, a lot of guys have developed some kind of agoraphobia. Like the thought alone of going outside scares the shit out of them. See, the distro centers and way stations around these parts here aren't like the ones back east. They're much more isolated, out in the middle of nowhere. Can't help but feel cut off from the world. And there's not a lot of staff on hand neither, which means you often have to wor uh, the which means you often have to do the work of two guys, which can make it that much lonelier too. And then you factor in the terrorism rumors. Also, is it just me or does it feel like there's more mules out there these days? Don't get me wrong, I know they're not out there to get us. All they want is our cargo, right? Well, that doesn't change the fact that they're not making our work any easier. Especially since a lot of these guys used to be first-rate porters and could run rings around us if they hadn't, you know. Still, for now, the network systems are up and running, and we're just holding out for the day when the second expedition comes through out, comes through with a working Cupid. Till then, uh, we'll keep things chugging along. That much we can do, for bridges and country. Am I right? I believe so. And we don't got any new mail, surprisingly. Because mail, you start getting a shit ton of that, too. All right. Um, uh, let's use the toilet. And get ourselves another grenade, maybe? <laughs> nice. Noise. Apparently that's on Netflix. I gotta watch it sometime. So now we just got a poo poo grenade. Okay, we don't know what this stuff does until we actually use it. The thing is, I don't care for them at all. They're not particularly useful. That should suffice. Glad to see everything's in good working order. The latest in our line of EX grenades. I give you the number two. As you may have surmised, this model was produced with various extracts refined from your fecal matter. We suspect that your regular consumption of cryptobiotes has led you to excrete certain compounds that may prove especially effective against BTs. If you would like us to produce more, you need only furnish us with the requisite raw materials via your private room's toilet. I look forward to your feedback. So, if you're wondering uh, how you actually get more of that stuff. You just have to eat more crypto biotes. And that's really it. And then you're all set to go. I'm sure there's a mod actually for this game that just makes it so drinking once gives you the 25% boost. Or going into your private room automatically gives you it. Just so you don't have to waste time doing that shit. Anyway, we got a big mission ahead of us. Let's go ahead and get ready. Power supply unit delivery, wind farm. Now, you've done a fine job expanding the Cairo network. But to make the most of it, we'll need to generate more power. We'll have to make a few hops before we can link up the closest city, too. Once this wind farm is part of the Cairo network, we'll be able to route the energy it generates through the beach. Unlike traditional transmission methods, nothing is lost. We can provide power to distant regions and utilize facilities there as electrical substations. You're to deliver a key component. Should be finished printing. Take it to the wind farm and get us in business. Sounds easy enough. Unfortunately though, this wind farm is exactly how it sounds. There's wind, which is going to be blowing you away, which is going to take you longer to actually get there. And there's lots of rain in the area as well. And, uh, lo and behold, there's also BTs. You can see in the warning signs there, there's BTs, cliffs, cliffs you can fall from, and twisty, turny roads. 
Deliver the power supply unit to the wind farm and connect it to the chiral network. Once the unit is online, the wind farm will be able to provide electricity over a wide area without losing any power in the transmission process. Hence the chiralium not having to worry about time loss. Which is super awesome. Power supply unit, a device used to distribu distribute the electricity generated by wind turbines far and wide via the chiral network. And we will be given two PCCs and a climbing anchor. Oh, I didn't need to make one. Alright, well, whatever. It happens. Excellent. We also make an extra pair of boots if we really want, but I'm alright. Uh, okay. Well, let's confirm. Obviously, we want this on our back. It's safest there. Uh, as for the PCCs, all I really want is one, so we'll hang this on uh, our suit. And we don't need an additional set of climbing anchors. No way. So, place this in our private locker along with our other PCC. We have two grenades that we don't know what they do. <laughs> I'll do some research on them, but I'm pretty sure they're just meant for really marking BTs, which is not necessary. But if you're really cautious, they're great for just, like, always being able to see a BT for a specific period of time. Um, you might also be able to scare them away with a poop grenade. Our boots are, are almost dead, but we'll get there. We might replace them at the top of the hill. Order assigned. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, we only have to go there once, right? Well, if you want to get the five stars, you're going to need to start thinking about making a trail up there because you're going to have to deliver a lot of goods to this place to actually get the five stars. As shitty as it sounds. So we're going to be going all the way up that hill and we're going to be hugging essentially the left side of it as we go up. So we got this lovely river here. The water effects in the game are just gorgeous, man. Super, super nice. And again, if you're ever curious as to how to get all your energy drink stuff back, say you're running low on stamina and energy drink, you've been out on the run for a long time, just go stand in a river for a little bit and you'll be fine. It'll uh, recharge the, uh, the monster energy drink thing. All right, looks like we got ourselves an interview real quick. Let's go ahead and read that. Quality first. How's BB doing, Sam? I hope you've managed to avoid autotoxemia altogether. By the way, I've been wondering, how are your porter grades these days? Getting better and better, I imagine. Or maybe you don't really care about that stuff. Well, in case you do, I thought I might give you a quick primer, since I know it can be confusing. Bridges has developed a unique system to evaluate porter performance, and it focuses on five categories. Cargo condition, delivery volume, speed, bridge link, and miscellaneous. Obviously, the aim of the game is to get high grades in all five categories. If you ask me though, you should prioritize cargo condition. I mean, what's the point of lugging something halfway across the continent if it's smashed to bits in the process? Sure, some people aren't all that bothered. Some will even let you get away with up to 50% damage or so, but come on. Imagine if you ordered a dozen thingamajigs and half of them were delivered broken. No, it's definitely better to put condition first. Treat your cargo with care and respect, and you'll be rewarded with way more likes. Trust me. That was my motto back when I was a porter. I wasn't always, sorry, it wasn't always easy, as you can imagine. Sometimes things got dicey, but I learned to hang in there and deliver my cargo in one piece. You do well to bear that in mind, Sam. After all, you've got the potential to be a way better porter than I ever was. He's right. That is absolutely the number one thing you always want to prioritize, no matter what. I know there's some, uh, some bugs over there, but we're actually going to keep focusing on this trail. Um, even if you're doing a speed mission, right? One that's like on a timer. Condition always outweighs timer, and as long as you're careful, you gotta think of the tortoise and the hare, right? Sam is the tortoise all the time. No matter what it is, Sam is the tortoise. And there's really no, like, if, ifs, ands, or buts about it. Actually, I also went the wrong way. Shoot. 
I forgot there's a little ridge here. Well, I'll try and fix it later. Now we're not sprinting. We're just kind of casually walking up here. You know, I guess I could sprint. It doesn't matter. I got the stamina. I drank the three monster energy drinks. We golden. So, as you can already hear, there's wind, there's rain. Everything that you don't want on a run, but we have to deal with it. Okay, so there's one thing I should point out here. There's these lovely items. There we go. That are called sandalweed. And they're not really designed to be a replacement for your shoes, but instead a way to do stealth gameplay. Essentially, you want to be able to stealth enemies uh, that are human, of course. You can't really stealth a BT. The BT is just going to sense you and murk you real good. But uh, these sandalweeds are pretty awesome. There we go. You can basically walk around with them on. Like, you can go full speed behind a... a uh, what does it call them? Full speed behind a mule and really have no issues. It's very, very powerful stuff. Keep on keeping on. So we're gonna get our stamina back thanks to these uh, keep on keeping ons. So you see how Sam is kind of like leaning over here? He's actually being blown by the wind. He's actually fighting it. You can see it there. He's having a very difficult time here because of the winds. So if you're ever wondering why, why is Sam going slower up the hill? It is straight up because the wind is affecting him very, very badly. At this point, you wouldn't even be bringing anything with you. There we go. Oh, someone actually uh, installed a level three post box. How nice is that? I don't know if this will get my video claimed, so I'm just going to be talking over it. <laughs> Regardless, though, we did bring a PCC, so we'll go ahead and clip that. And we... oops. Okay, let's go grab our watchtower. I listen to the soundtrack, like, on the daily, dude. This music is so good. Okay, uh... No Cairo network coverage, steep slope, so we'll just kind of weasel our way in here somewhere. See those X's on the ground? Those are the issues. I guess the more slopey it gets, the worse it's going to be for us. So what we're going to do is maybe... Try and sneak this bad boy on the side. Oh, there we go. We'll build this right here. And the only reason I want this is just to be able to detect uh, items on the hill and potentially kind of cheese it a little bit and maybe see some stuff in the next zone. This is kind of why we also brought container repair spray because I knew this was going to take about 20 seconds to do. Construction complete. Look at that, all the sandalweed in the world right there, right? We just pan around here. As you can see, it's kind of detecting some stuff on the inside, but the most important thing is that we can see that we're not too far away from our destination, the wind farm. Again, the most difficult thing in this game right now is us getting to the wind farm. I, I think this is probably the hardest run in the game. the intense amount of wind that's slowing you down and the uh, the steep slopes as well so we're just going to be holding our straps here and very carefully making our way through the moment we detect any sort of BTs we're going to use our container repair spray I'm not too concerned about tripping and falling here, especially if we're holding onto our straps. And we're gonna be walking through this zone anyway. 
We are getting a little bit of momentum, but that's to be expected. As always, we can always double check how far away we are from our destination. We are currently 332 horizontal meters away from our target. So what we are going to do is we're going to drop our anchor here. This is typically a pretty good spot for an anchor, I find. And we are going to drop our booties down. Because again, anchors are crazy. They are 30 meters long. They are the length of three ladders. And they are continuous, which is very nice. It's not uncommon to see, like, rope after rope as well on big mountains. But thankfully, this is actually not too bad of a zone. Alright, so now we've detected that there's BTs as we're getting to chills. And whenever I figure out where my repair spray is, you can tell I never use this stuff. Alright, let's uh, equip. So what we do is we want to point it backwards by hitting square, and then we can just repair the uh, crate on our backpack. And this thing's pretty rusty, so I wouldn't be surprised if it takes 100, maybe even 150 of the repair spray. But we're going to use it all. All right. And now we can just drop this on the ground because we don't need it anymore. And uh, just to be safe, we're going to go into our cargo. And uh, we are just going to auto arrange our gear. How is our boots doing right now? We are 85% damage. We should be fine. So we will confirm. So one cool thing with this type of stuff is that we can actually distract BTs using container repair spray. That's now been used up. We can throw the box in the distance once the BTs have arrived. And it will actually distract them, which is pretty great. But uh, don't be too surprised if it takes you a little while to get through here. I think R1 is my... yeah, there we go. I'll make sure it's in my left hand. Oh, there's a baby in front of us. Okay, I see. We've got company. So only when the hands are on the actual ground is do you need to hold your breath. This is not going to really turn into a trail for us, unfortunately. There's just not much we can do about that. But the way that the BTs are set up right now, our main goal is survival. But we already have eyes on the target, which is great. Now, uh, the path of least resistance is actually just down this way, but they've sure as hell put like 20 BTs in the way, so we're not going to do that. You'll see there, that should alert an enemy. And essentially the idea is that it's going to keep them away from us. Oh! <sighs> 
All right, we're just gonna hold our breath and go straight through. All right, we should be good. That wasn't too bad at all. Now, the worst thing that could happen here is we trip uh, and fall right into a rock. <laughs> and we just damage all the goods on our back. So as you can see, this thing is quite rusted again. Begin the scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. And there you go. That was a pretty smooth run, I'd say. Until departure. Cargo verified. Thank you. It's really muddy on the ground, hence why we're walking a bit slower. That's all. Delivering cargo. Thank you. With this unit, we should be able to power the distro center via the chiral network. Other places, too, if it works. Here's hoping the UCA can put our electricity to good use. Mind if I have a look? Incredible. How'd you get this here? You fly? I like how he nods, yeah. I flew. There you go, another easy S rank. Not too shabby. All we need now is a connection to the chiral network. Go for it. is a limited resource and every structure you build consumes it. However, as you increase your connection level, the bandwidth available to you will increase as well. Hey, another place connected. Humanity's biggest problem, logistics, chiral continuum one, and the discovery of beaches and the concept of death have been added to your interview dialog. The wind farm has shared data as a result of joining the UCA, and you can now use the PCC to build generators, which means we can get that bike up and running over by the base of operations. We have new features such as supply requests, bridge links, take on orders, standard orders, make delivery, delivery requests and supplies, entrust cargo, and garage. Garage is because we can now get the bike, so we can now throw the bike into the, uh, the base and have it get repaired. This area is now connected to the Kyle network. Perfect. About time we did our part. Thanks again. You know, I heard the rest of your team was wiped out. Makes what you're doing all the more incredible. You're a one-man expedition. I hope Amelie's doing as well as you. Wonder if she made it to Edgenaut City yet. It was her that put us in charge of the wind farm. I was with the group bringing up the rear while Amelie led the way. I've never met her in person. But it was an honor to travel with her all the same. When you see her, feel free to tell her I said so, huh? Sam, got a moment? I ran an experiment with your blood. It seems you were onto something. After dispersing an aerosolized sample of your blood in BT territory, we observed reduced activity. While this is hardly definitive as we have no other repatriates to whom we can turn for additional testing, it does suggest that the bodily fluids of repatriates a repellent to BTs. Mama had the idea of developing a weapon to test this theory. The prototype should be ready soon. And when it is, we'd like you to test it. Sam, this is the perfect opportunity. We've almost got the whole region on the chiral network. 
All that's left is Port Knot City. Return to Capital Knot City so you can pick up relief supplies for Port Knot. By the time you arrive, we can give you the completed prototype in person. One other thing. It's not very often porters get out to that wind farm. While you're there, you should pick up any outstanding orders. No sense coming all the way back here empty-handed if there's work to be done. Have a look at that delivery terminal. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. Uh, I'm not sure if there's actually a... Oh, there is. Okay, perfect. Yeah, this guy left a little marker for us. Mutt. Good job, Mutt. Gotta look out for these arrows because they usually tell you certain things. Like how there's a key card or something over here. Or a memory chip in this case. There we go. And it's also stopped raining, which is nice. So, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap up this episode here. Wow. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've been enjoying my playthrough of Death Stranding so far, and it's been informative. And uh, let me know if you guys have been playing some Death Stranding, because it's actually pretty awesome. Go give it a look. Go check it out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.